Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Anderson's TV. This man here is remarkably fresh, <laughs> given the time of day that we've been uh, asked to do this. It is, it is uh, pre the normal time we would, uh, <laughs> it's pre-breakfast, basically. Uh, but that's because you're so busy. So Josh Smith, everybody. Thank um, you, so great to be here uh, again. No, it's <laughs> super, super good to see you. And it's great because we're, you know, relatively new album. Yep. Some dates in the UK. Oh yeah. New board. New board. New board. <laughs> um, so tell us, come on, since we last saw you, tell us about Burn to Grow and, and you okay. know, how that's happened. And So yeah, the record came out basically October 1st, September 28th. Um, it's called Burn to Grow. It's my 10th album, actually. No I did the math recently and I, did, I hadn't realized that. Um, I'm pretty proud of it. I feel like it's the first record that really kind of represents what you actually get when you come to a gig which is a little bit of everything filtered through the blues, but you get all the stuff that I like. And, you know, it splits the difference between a lot of my records. I, I tend to get stylized on a lot of records. So one record will be the rock trio record, totally improv. One record has more complex arrangements, strings and horns. This sits in the middle. It's uh, all live as far as what I, what I played and with the rhythm section. But then there's horns, there's background singing. The songs have more changes in them, things like that. I think it's a good cross section of yeah. what I do. It's a cool album. We were listening, we, Pete and I and Taylor had a road trip yesterday and we were listening to the album. And I mean, it's, it's again, I, I think you're right. In, in there's some blistering guitar playing on there. There's some really cool kind of driving tunes on there. Um, and you have that unique blend of, of the sort of, yeah, the, the 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 bluesy jazz, even the gospely kind. Of, you know, some of the. It's very cool. If you've not listened to one of Josh's albums, you should Thank absolutely you, do that. So yeah, so we're in March now, 2019. Yes. And you're going to do some dates in the UK, which is awesome. Yeah, the um, first date is Sunday up in in Scotland, and um, we're here till the 26th, the last date at the Borderline in London. How brilliant! So it's a great. It's 17 shows in 17 days. <laughs> wow! Not a single night off. No. Have you ever done a stretch as long as that before? I have, but normally there's a few days off yeah. in there. I don't know that I've done that many days without a single day off. Yeah. So how does the voice hold up on a, on we'll a 17? See. <laughs> we'll see. I'm pretty good, you know, d nobody ever sees me do it, but I'm pretty good at warming myself up. I yeah. know kind of what I need to do to, to make it through the nights and yeah. make that thing happen. I've never lost my voice ever. Right. Do you, uh, do you um, re-pitch any of the tunes? To I don't re-pitch no, any just... of the tunes. I just kind of warm up. I think a lot of singers, I mean, I'm not a singer. I, I am, but I'm a guitar player first. So singing was hard yeah. and learning how to do that and be a professional in those terms. But once I kind of asked some of my friends, what, what do you do to sing every mm -hmm. night? I kind of glean this and glean that. Yeah. And the biggest one is just doing this all the time. People, You can't hear me do it in the van, Dudley, but I'm always going, mm, like as low as you can go. Mm. It just warms your throat up. If you do it for 20 minutes before you sing, it makes an enormous difference. Do you, do you, um, I mean, I noticed that you didn't want a coffee this morning or anything. Yeah. Do, you, are you, do you sort of intentionally lay off certain types of food or drink no. or anything? No, no. <laughs> no, I mean, this is my biggest vice is Coca-Cola. Oh, okay. That's where I get all my caffeine. I'm not a coffee drinker. Right. Um, yeah. What about the guitar playing side of it? I mean, 17 days straight. It, yeah. It, or is, it, is that really... Is it no? Is the amount of playing you're doing on a 17-day straight tour no real difference to what you'd play if you were just messing at home? Noon? No, no, no. You, it's you more to... playing. I mean, all the you know, I'm playing two hours a night, mm -hmm. and you're sweating. You're into it. It's different than what you're doing when you're yeah. sitting at home or in the studio or something. But I love that feeling. Yeah. There's nothing like the feeling of road chops. Yeah. How you're playing at the end of playing ten gigs in a row or something like that. You feel like you can so you scale noticeably. Mount Everest. You know? Right. Yeah. Okay. So the the gig to come and see if you want is the borderline one, presumably. <laughs> the best gig will be in the middle. Oh, in probably the middle somewhere. Yeah. Okay. But but yeah, the borderline one I should be well. Well, in. I, I'm yeah. pretty sure, guys, that it, you know we'll we'll have this video edited and turned around in time. That hopefully, uh, maybe not the first couple of dates on the tour, but the bulk of the dates on the yeah. tour will you know hopefully you can dive on check out the description description below you can see if yes. there's a date near you go and check them out um now i know uh the last couple of days you've been down with our dear friend dan at uh gig rig or yep. you might know him better from dan from the, that pedal show and this is some motherboard crazy stuff going on down here yes some of the pedals you've had for a while some yes. of them are fairly new yep um do you think everything's going to get used on the tour at some point or other yes i do <laughs> i um I've been planning this board in my head for about a year, mm -hmm. pretty much. 
Uh, when Dan wired up the last board, it was a little over two years ago, uh, which is a smaller Schmidt Array 450 board, which has been a godsend. Like the last two years, having that board fit in the overhead on the plane, um, and with the G2 be able to pull off everything I normally did with my much bigger Bradshaw board has been so wonderful. And it's also enabled me to, you know, start having those thoughts of what would I change? You yeah. know, when you have a board and you stick with it for a while, you can start start to hear what do you miss? What don't you need that you already have there? What, what would you add? So I've kind of planned a lot of things and we went above and beyond on this board. Uh, it's freaking ridiculous and yeah we spent marathon the last two yeah. days putting this together i i messaged dan probably in december or january and said okay dude i'm coming over in march the first week is relatively chill no gigs how about i send you all my pedals in the mail i won't even bring my pedal board you think we can get it wired in time before the first gig oh no problem no problem no problem and then of course we're there till one in the morning the other night <laughs> getting it done. I, I mean i know my little board which is like not even a quarter as complex as yours took Dan maybe four or five hours to, yeah. to, to wire up. Yeah. I mean, I'm loving this. We've set the GoPro up down here so hopefully you guys can get a look. You can see on the top here. Well, talk us through what's on the top and then lift the lid okay. and let's see what's here. Well, the main thing on the top, of course, the Chula is first. Uh, it's been my go-to pedal for almost 11 years. Yeah. Um, I can't, I mean, just honestly, I can't gig without it. I have not played a gig without it, even a jam in 11 years. It stays in my gig bag. It stays on every board. 98% of what you hear when you come to my gigs is Chula yeah. first, always Chula, you know? Yeah. To, to, again, I, I, the Chula's in it, well, in fact, your whole playing, uh, your whole philosophy on sort of amp tone is, is quite interesting because you, you yeah. have this, it's, you play loud, but with big headroom gain yeah. sounds, yeah. don't you? Yeah. So, to, so how does, tell I, us about that and what the Chula sort of does. Why, why has it become the cornerstone of your kind of tone? Well, I guess, to boil it all down, I'm looking for maximum information at all times. So that means dynamic range, you know? So I'm trying to eliminate compression. I don't hate compression, but to me it's an effect. You gotta use it and treat it that way. You use it where you need it and bring it in, bring it out. But as a whole, when I'm improvising, because that's what I am, I'm looking for dynamics because that's an equal part of what I do as an improviser. It's not just note choice and technique and all the playing. It's how you say it. So how you say it could be as simple as dynamically changing the way you pick, changing yeah. your volume. So I want every nuance that I have in my playing to be there. Yeah. And compression evens those things out. Yeah. It's not evil, but it does take away dynamics. So the Chula is kind of the first pin in that chain of where well actually i mean it starts with the strings even and the pickups that i like everything is generated to to kind of go down that that road yeah so the chula is an incredibly simple pedal obviously it has one knob but the main side that i use 90 percent of the time has no knob so basically guitar in guitar out it's preset i can't change it it has a massive amount of boost yeah but it's a massively dynamic pedal yeah so i'll get messages all the time from guys who have the pedal and they only play through a small practice amp or champ or yeah. something in their room. And it, it doesn't sound like it has any gain. It, it yeah. sounds bright and just like a clean boost. But on a gig situation, it is more than enough for me to cover 95% of what I do. And that's because it's so dynamic. Yeah, so, it's a great yeah. pedal. Yeah, give us, give us a... Give okay, us a so here's straight in. And here's the first side of the Chulo. pickup in this guitar is so dynamic I can play entire gigs never leaving the bridge pickup and it's plenty clean and then yeah. does it you, you mentioned there a little thing about it um, guys buying the pedal who've perhaps got much smaller amplifiers not getting uh, the kind of sound that they're expecting out of it your 
Josh Smith Morgan. Is that a 30 or a 50? I can't remember. Well, the one they sell is a 12. It's a little Prince, the JS12. Yeah, yeah. The one that I gig with is a 40, my bigger right. one. <clears throat> so the 12 is what I use in the studio all the time and pretty much every session in the last five years. But the JS40 is my gigging. Right. Yeah. And is that that's your sort of, that's enough headroom. Yeah. But without, so, so what is it? Do you, does it not appeal to you to go for like a 100 watt amplifier no, with no, massive it, headroom? It or? does, but you know, I've learned over the years there's there's a difference between just headroom for the sake of headroom and headroom that really, really feels good and takes pedals right. Yeah. Certain 100 watt amps are just sterile and will always be sterile. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Uh, you know, two rocks and Dumble style amps are different. They have their own thing. Dumbles. For me, over the years, I've never enjoyed the way they take pedals. Two Rock right. has kind of fixed some of that with yeah. what they do. Um, but, you, you know, it'll freak people out sometimes, even with my Two Rock, which is a loud amp, 100 watt amp. Yeah. When I put my 40 watt Morgan next to it, sometimes that sounds louder than a 100 watt Two Rock. And that's just the architecture of a yeah. non-master yeah. Fender style amp. It has this thing yeah. that lends itself to this situation, you know? Yeah, it's a great, I mean, hundreds of other videos I'm sure online about that, but it's a great point about, you know, 100 watt versus 40 watt versus even 10 watt. It's really not, it's not perceived volume, is it? It's mm -hmm. feel and dynamics and the character of the amplifier that changes. Anyway, look, I don't like when there's no reaction from the amp. Right. I like headroom, but with a little bit of character, with yeah. reaction to the pedals, reaction yeah. to your pickups, things like yeah. that. Yeah. So, okay, so that's the tuner. I mean, again, we know your association with, with that pedal. Absolutely. Um, but there's a lot of other new funky stuff on here. So what's next? Uh, well, next is the Myriad Fuzz, um, which you is... You did the, the NAM demo you did of that, which I must admit, again, it, it was like the NAM p volume police. And it's just like, I think, was it last day of the show? And it was I think just nobody so, cared yeah. anymore, did yeah. they? It was just like, yeah. yes! Yeah. So great video, go and watch that. But tell us, if, tell us, um, tell us about the, the, how you... You know, because you've been working with Vemuram for a long time as well, haven't you? I have. I've been so Dai and Shingo are some of my best friends and the greatest guys I know yeah. at Vemuram. And they've brought me to Japan multiple times. And I always felt like such a loser because I don't use a Jan Ray or, right. or you know, I love their pedals, but I didn't ever had any on my board really. They were just my friends. So the Myriad came about a lot because yes it was something i've been wanting because as you can tell from my personality i've always got a bunch of ideas and there's things i'm trying to get people to make and try but also it came from my goodness i need these guys to make something i can use because i love them so much and i want to support my friends you know yeah. so that's how it started and i asked for this crazy pedal that i'd wanted for 10 years that i had approached so many guys to build and they all took a pass on i don't i don't think i can make it i don't can't do it it's too weird and Dyer said, oh, I'll make that, no problem. So that's the big myriad, which will be in this whole right. insert here yeah. just any day. So anyways, we made a prototype of that last year at NAMM, and it was the myriad fuzz, which is, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. It's a unique fuzz that I had also had a lot of ideas about with a loop and a, a mixer. So it had a dry through, two outs, and then the wet out had, you could blend the fuzz or what it was ever in the loop. So whatever we made this prototype and it did everything i wanted but you know it needed to be ironed out but the fuzz side of it i asked for a fuzz that had both silicon and germanium transistors in it and that could do i had a whole list of things it needed to do so they nailed that and when everybody heard the fuzz side of the big pedal they were just like this is the best fuzz i've ever heard so die immediately was like we have to make this fuzz standalone yeah so of course it's come out first and people are loving it and i'm really proud of it it's it's got this unbelievably cool spitty but fat look you demo it better than anybody on the planet so okay let's, let's, let's so it. yeah it's guitar goes in hits germanium Hit, which is a vintage germanium transistor, then hits a silicon transistor. The germanium you can bias, the silicon is fixed bias. The feel control kind of adjusts the feedback between the two, and you got tone, volume, and level. Right now I've got it set relatively spitty. Yeah. Because of something we were doing last night at rehearsal. So here's n nothing on. And Do you, 
do you use that typically in isolation or do you, have you layered that uh, with other tones? I, I normally, you, is your tula on as well? Or not is right that, now, right? no. Okay. And that's that's part of one of the things that was on my list for the Myriad was it needed to be super loud. Yeah. And that's because, first off, you'll find fuzz faces a lot of times, even you turn them all the way up. Yeah. It's, they're not super loud. Yeah. And the chula is really loud. So when it's on 90% of the time and I turn it off, anything sounds quiet. Yeah. So I was like, this pedal has to be super loud and be able to get above the chula. So it does that. Um, and then, you know, right now we've got it thick and spitty, but it yeah. can get really bright and clear on stage. And yeah. it does so much. But is, is that another one where, again, I mean, the amp that we're using is like a 35 watt brown face kind of clone. Mm -hmm. Does it, do you, are you feeling like you'd like a little bit more headroom there? Or is this typically the kind of sort of No, sound I'd be that louder you, than that you, for sure. Yeah, yeah more headroom. Yeah, definitely. Not that this sounds bad, but yeah. So, you know, a lot of times I'll pair that with uh, the flashback just for slap yeah. type thing. A lot of times I'm using a Strat with the fuzz too. Yeah. You, want to, you want me to plug sure. in the Strat? Let's, absolutely. Actually, I wouldn't mind hearing the difference between the Strat and the... There you go. The nice thing about once I put the big Myriad on there, then I'll have basically two Myriad fuzzes. So I can set one real spitty and one a little more cutting and clear. You should, you should have been, we should have filmed this. We uh, just restrung this guitar before this and Josh was trying to sort of, you know, stretch some of the bends out. These are, this is what, 13 to? 58. 13 to 58. And he's taking like the, the, the D and uh, the G string and bending it like, I don't know what, two tones, two yeah, and a half tones. Steps, it's yeah. like, oh my God, it's like, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just <laughs> about getting a tone bend out of these with my fingers, but anyway, there we go. Crazy stuff. So here's the myriad with, I just turned on the flashback, yep. uh, mini flashback. Sounds great, man. But if I turn the feel up, and the tone up, it'll clean up a little bit. It's much, much brighter than the sort of the Eric Johnson-y kind of fuzz, isn't it? Much yeah. sort of, again, yeah, well, more spitty. Want, man, because I want people yeah. out front to really hear everything yeah. that's going on, even with the fuzz. I like it. Because there's like a tendency it. for fuzz to disappear in a live situation. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So that's the, the Myriad fuzz. I, I was, again, we had our first delivery of those about two weeks ago, and they, I think they went the, the day they arrived. So, I mean, that's good it, to uh, hear. Yeah. <laughs> great to hear. Um, so, hopefully, get some more of those in soon. But so, what's next in the row? Uh, the Believe Octave pedal, which is under the deck. Or we want me to go over just the top first? Uh, I don't mind, or we can flip the lid and show what it. Let's I do mean, the top okay, first. Okay, we do the top. Uh, so there's, okay, the Chula, the Memor the Vemorim. We've got the Plexi Loop. Yeah. So this is the first one where I put two pedals in one loop. I've got the Love Pedal Echo Plexi, and I've got the Origin Effects Revival Drive. Right. And this is my whole like Marshall-y side of the pedal board. Um, so on the Revival Drive, I've kind of wanting to set it for like a clean Plexi tone and a super bass tone on yeah. its two sides. And then the echo plexi is more like my screaming plexi tone and it has a little bit of echo, you yeah. know, so I've set a slap. So let's hear, right now the echo plexi is on, so let's hear that. That's nothing else, it's just the echo plexi. You mentioned um, one of the interesting things with the Echo Plexi is it's basically it's an Echo Plex and sorry it's an Echo pedal and a like a Marshall Purple yes. Plexi. Um, but you there's a toggle switch on the top to, to to allow you to decide which one comes first. Yeah, and you like it so it's the Echo feeding into the Marsh into the Plexi kind of sound. Because it is kind of like plugging an Echo Plex in front of a Plexi. Yes. So you get that that craziness. The other thing that's cool is the Echo Plex side of this pedal has like, you know, a preamp in it. Yeah. And if you run it this way and turn the Echo off, the preamp is still affecting the front of the Echo. Like oh, having, okay. Like you are plugged through yeah. an Echo Plex. Right, 
So here's the plexi without the echo. <laughs> in front now if I flip the switch now the echoes after oh, but no preamp though it's not <laughs> see how much brighter it is and yeah. less rolled off so it is kind of rolling it off the way it would be plugging through an echoplex it's pretty freaking cool that's cool yeah so there again both <laughs> I'm glad we don't do too many of these early morning ones, I must admit. <laughs> it's super loud, but it's cool, man. So the Revival Drive, yes. that's a... Um, I'm seeing that on a, on a, a lot of uh, players' boards at the moment. Yeah. I, I know you said you're kind of only just beginning to sort of scrape the surface of what the pedal can do. It does a lot. <laughs> yeah. But what are, what are your sort of favorite tones on this so far? So far, this is my favorite tone on it. I've got the left side set. To me, what sounds like a super bass a little bit. Like to me, that kind of has. That's my favorite yeah. that I found so far. That's I'll very be cool. Digging into it a lot. And that's. That genuinely did actually sound like you've like a really loud, you know, old Marshall. And we're, although we're fairly loud in here. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty clever, actually, how it gets that. And it really shifted the yeah. tone yeah. from the preamp of the amp. You yes. know what I mean? Totally yeah. different. Kinda, it really kind of has. Yeah, that's that cool, thing. man. Plus, I, I noticed earlier. For pedals before it, it kind of really does feel like putting a pedal into a Marshall. Yeah. So like if I put the Myriad on that. Way brighter like a fuzz into a I take it all back. This is the best way to start the day. I take it all back. Um, okay, so let's talk about the uh, how you're using the what the Volante next. Yeah, so the Volante is new to yep. the board too. Um, I'm a huge Echo Rec fan. I have a real one, and I've used the Catlin bred Echo Rec since the oh, day okay. that it came out. Yep. I love that pedal. I love the sound of the Echo Rec. Um, so when this pedal was announced, I got kind of excited. And it's actually my first Strymon pedal ever. I've never, oh, really? I've never owned any other Strymon pedals. I did not know that. I don't know why. There's no particular reason for it. I just never had any. Or can, yeah. maybe I didn't connect with any that much, you know? Yeah. So at NAMM this year, I went and tried it, and I was floored. It's so good. It sounds like, you know, an Echo Rec, but then also they put in stuff in the control that is so genius and yeah. so smartly done and it's the kind of things that i sit around thinking man why don't why can't i do this or why can't i do that <laughs> they put all those things in there and it's like like the ability right now it's set we're only going through one amp so you won't even hear the way it's set yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. but right now i've got head one going to the right head four going to the left they each have repeats on and heads two and three are in the middle pan straight i've turned the feedback off for them and they're half volume and it's so easy to do that. You know well, what I mean? Let's take a listen to this. Isn't that just like, that's like angels from heaven coming down <laughs> over your guitar tone, isn't it? It's, I, we had the same thing when, when we did the Volante demo, we did do it in stereo. And again, yeah. it's just, it's chords, simple chords just become like epic pieces of music in themselves. You know what though, the thing about the Echo Rec in general, I find besides just it's a great 
delay and it's totally unique as far as mod the way it modulates and does its thing. The Echo Rec, more than any delay I've ever played, gets out of your way. You right. can have massive amounts of delay and still it doesn't feel like it takes your thing over. You know yeah. what I mean? Abs yeah. I, I don't know. It just does I think something. that that Catlin Echo Rec pedal is still, you know, if, you, <laughs> if you're looking at a a, a way more affordable version Absolutely. of getting this kind of tone. It's still the one to buy, but if it's a money no object and you can do four hundred bucks or whatever on a on a yep. on a that this is the ultimate one. It's I'm just... super impressed, and I haven't even uh, dove into the sound on sound. I saw a video somebody posted of the looper side of it. Yes, it freaked me out. It was so good. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I think for, you know for like shoegazers, you've got all the reverse stuff <laughs> yeah, that's in that there and everything. But yeah. just for a basic, amazing sounding. Vintage delay, it's just it's just great. Yep, it's um, crazy good. So I've got it in this, <coughs> another one I did shared loops. I put it in the same loop with the H9 mm -hmm. because now that we've added this Morningstar MIDI controller as a, so basically I'm letting the G2 uh, sleep easier at yes. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm relegating the G2 to direct access yeah. and just some presets and a lot of presets will be loaded from the Morningstar. And then I'll yeah. also have an individual MIDI page on the Morningstar for all the MIDI pedals. So the Volante, the H9, yeah. and the um, yeah. HX Stomp. So this way, I could put the Volante and the H9 in the same stereo loop at the end, and I can bypass them with yeah. MIDI. It gives you, know you a bit more control, doesn't it? So, exactly. Um, so what do you, I mean, the Eventide, um, for guys that aren't familiar, is, uh, again, tons and tons of different effects, but mm. only ever really one at a time. So what are you typically enjoying out of the H9? Well... I use Leslie out of it constantly. I use tons of delays and reverbs out of it. I use some ring mods out of it. On sessions, it's my most important pedal right. um, because it's so versatile. Everything sounds so good in it, and it's so easy to control. I put the iPad on my music yeah. stand, and it's, yeah. Yeah. it's got all that. Um, I honestly, I mean, I... I can't i mean i use it so much it's a part i it's the one that for like my songs i program yeah. specific things into it yeah but like right now here's like the the my main leslie sound which is funny everybody's always like you got to get you know a lex or a, or yeah, a yeah. vent or whatever and then and then they hear how i've programmed this and like i can't get that sound out of my h9 and i worked hard on programming this leslie and i keep i keep the picture on my phone because of the amount of times people ask me, what are your settings right. on H9? And I'm, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> but I, I use the H9 for tons of stuff. It's great. What are the two buttons in front of it? That was a, a Dan thing. Right. He said, this can give you, because um, normally I s assign a button on the gig rig to, I have an automatic Leslie button that immediately changes it no matter what back to my Leslie preset and activates it. So yeah. I'm going to assign that to one of these oh, okay. instead of having it on the G2. And then the other one I normally assign is the hot switch, which we're going to assign here. And it's like here. So for the Leslie, it's the break. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It freed up buttons on the G2 to have this little extra on the H9. That's cool. Yeah. Funny enough, we were trying to do that on Pete's H9, just to, and he worked out how to do it from the from the G2. But it's quite clever. To, and that little switch at the front, that's just like an inch deep and just sits on the board, takes up next to the no space. It's actually got a whole plate underneath it that the H9 mounts to, and then oh. it's hardwired, plugs into the expression jack on the back. Is it an Eventide product then? Or well, is it I just think like they a... do have now. You can get it through Eventide. Is it called a they Bun call... Three? Yeah. That one? And I, I, I've not never seen them I think before. they do have this one didn't come from Eventide but right. I think Eventide has now made a deal with them right okay. where you can get them through yeah, Eventide. Cool. Yeah. So is it time to go below deck now? I believe it is it time is time to, to go, go below, below deck. deck. Let's do this. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> there we go. And uh, I don't want Dan to get upset. This little grouping of cables that looks messy is for the big myriad will be here. So otherwise it's freaking sparkling. I'm loving the here. fact that we had to do the, <laughs> don't get upset, Dan. Don't let the OCD <laughs> kick in or anything about the fact that some, it probably took him hours to get this to be neat. And, oh yeah. Um, now some of the things that are underneath here, we're like not surprised to see. The Duelist, for example, mm -hmm. the Believe you've had for a long time, but we'll talk about that. And then of course you go and just do this, like throw the cat amongst the pigeons and go and put an HX stomp in there as well. So since I posted the pictures <coughs> of the board the last day, that's the one that everybody's like, HX stomp, 
Can I have your settings? HX Stomp, what are you using for? Yeah. I, I can't believe it fits under the deck, blah, blah, blah. Why do you need it? Blah, blah, blah. Well, and um, let's start with the HX Stomp then, as that's, you know, because they are all my questions. It's like, hang on a second, you've got like a mini version of a Helix kind of, you know, yeah. amp modeling, everything, yeah. you know, kind of like really wouldn't expect to see that, but but you're loving it similarly, similarly, if you like, in the way you love your H9, aren't you? That's the way that? I'm thinking about it, yeah. like the H9. Um, First off, when I got the HX Stomp, I had already been familiar with the Helix. Uh, one of my very closest friends in California is associated with Line 6. Mm -hmm. So I check out the stuff when it's coming out and all that. And he sent me one of the HX Effects, which is the all effects yeah. version. And it was the first time I really dove into hearing you know, what it can do just with the effects side. Yeah. And I was like, man, this does a lot. Like, you know, whereas the H9, I could load one thing. This thing, I could load a million things. And yeah, the H9, I think certain things sound better, but the the flexibility was flooring me. And also some of the things in it sound incredible. So I started thinking, oh, it'd be cool to use this. Then they announced this thing and I saw how small it was and it was yeah. like, oh, I'm absolutely gonna use that. I don't care about the amp modeling or any of that stuff, but I can load six effects blocks or whatever on each preset and basically use it to augment the H9. So if the yeah. H9 is doing something, the HX Stomp could be doing something. So I put some trims already on the HX Stomp because a lot of times I like to have a reverb or a delay from the H9 and then I can't have a trim from the H9. Yeah. So like, here's just a fast trim. Yeah. Leslie's still on. And I'm kind of learning, you know, all the things. I'm going to program it up with a lot of auxiliary stuff. Mm -hmm. And the other interesting thing is once the Big Myriad is there, we've set up the board where anything previous to the Big Myriad loop, I can alternate, alternately send into the loop of the Myriad instead of being on the through thing. So I'll be able to load crazy sounds in the HX stomp, have it feed the loop of the Myriad, yeah. and then blend that in with an expression pedal only to my second amp. So <laughs> I don't know how you remember what order the songs come in, let alone the words and what you're supposed to stomp on and the licks and everything like that. You must have like the, ev compartmentalized every part of your brain into doing a different thing. It was funny, a rehearsal last night, I changed, you know, this is a new G2, a whole new everything, and I kind of changed where I put the buttons normally, and it was, I was throwing myself off all night last night in rehearsal. That's cool. You, one of the sounds we had before was you, you had like a little bit of grit from the, the HX going into the tremolo as well. well I had this great. Univibe. Was it so. Univibe, was it? And what's cool is you can assign the blocks to do, you know, whatever you want to do. So I had added like a Brit preamp. This is without it. And here's adding just a little bit of juice to it. And the other happy accident that I realized when we were wiring up the board was, well, if I put Univibe in it, it's going to be after my fuzz because it's later in the chain. But because of the Myriad, the big Myriad, yeah. it has a fuzz in it. So I can use a Univibe from this and it'll be in front of the big Myriad. Right. I didn't even think about that, but it worked itself out. Well, <laughs> that's great. So the Duelist is another one that's been on your board for a while. Yeah. Using, but you were saying that the, the, it doesn't end up. It's pretty similar sounding to the to the to the new. This is this is a prototype version of the Vemuram Tube Screamer, right? That sort of greeny gold. Pedal yeah, the green no one is the Vemuram Ibanez uh, collaboration yeah. pedal, and it's really good. Yeah. I mean, are they, are they suitably different enough that you think you'll keep them on both? I on think the board, I will or? keep them both on. The the Vemuram I'm setting thicker. Yeah. right now and the duelist is my typical i love ts10 so yeah. the duelist i set on the glass setting to kind of give me the brighter ts10 yeah. thing and it's been my my main strat pedal for you know however long now so here's another cool dan thing is we put the duelist and the ibanez as in its own loop too same loop oh, okay the tube screamer loop but we put this remote loopy in that loop so they're both plugged to this remote loopy, and then I can flip flop back and forth, even though they're in the same loop. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, here is uh, straight in. Here's the duelist. Sounds perfect.
perfect, pretty Doesn't much. Doesn't it? <laughs> and then here's the Ibanez one, which I've set thicker. And believe it or not, the Ibanez one, Vemoram, has even more volume. So here's that. <laughs> Um, I don't even know if GoPro will show you, but, but sort of wedged down the back was the flashback that we tried a little bit earlier on. Yes, yeah, that's probably way the most affordable pedal on your board, isn't it? Like just the mini TC flashback. Maybe so. I've had that on my board now for years. Uh, I did a tone print with them, yeah. just with my little slap thing, and I have to have that available to me at all times. So that's just right. straight up. And that'll work great with one of those drive pedals or something. Oh, it works. Like, it, it, just... it works flawlessly with all of them. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, the belief, which I've just noticed as well. Did you have that custom made so that the inputs were on the top, or is that just how they no, are? No, that's that's how they are. I don't think yeah, I've no ever knobs, seen a pedal like that. Just the inputs on the top. Yeah. Um, and that's that's just the octave version, so not an octave fuzz. It's just the octave. Right. It's um. It's kind of really like a ring mod, but right. it's doing the octave up. So it's like a, a really lukewarm ring mod. Okay. And so here's nothing again. And here's the believe. Yeah, it's just really clean and you can play down the neck. Unlike an Octavia and I can play bridge pickup. And it doesn't take your head off and then I can combine it with things which is what I really like so like with the chula you know and it gets its own sound but if I put it with the myriad fuzz then it's gonna be full-on Octavia land you know <laughs> Man, it's amazing. I mean, it's like you've got a bunch of other switchy stuff in here. Like you've got gig rig humdingers. So the, hum, the humdingers was because I asked Dan, could I have four outputs instead of two? Right. Because the gig rig, the G2 has two outputs. I wanted to clone those outputs so I could have like two sets of outputs. So this is some sometimes for studio things. Yeah. But also in case I want to use three or four amps. I've been thinking about doing a, a rig with four small amps. Right. And so I wanted to have matching sets of like left and right, left and right. So this enabled them to come out of the two outputs of the G2 into each one into a humdinger, and that, that clones the output. What, what would be your four? You know, what was for, for maybe a live thing, so it's not about choosing which one, you know, like the whole thing, what would be your dream, like, wall of noise? Okay, for me it would be, normally my gigging rig is like uh, the JS40, so that's like yeah. a super reverb style amp with an AC30 or, yeah. or the AC40, the Morgan. Um, but then I, lately I've been wanting to add um, uh, a Selmer. I'm getting way into Selmers. I have a few at the house. Right. And so I, I'm trying to convince Morgan to build me this Selmer. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'd like to also have um, something to cover the Dumble territory there, and have those four amps. There was a just, uh, I mean, only, I remember you we're using the, the, the Rift amp here. It's a guy in the UK called Chris Fantana and his, he has an amp, <laughs> is it the Hawker? He's done a Hawker, which is effectively like a selmer -y kind of clone. And I'd never really tried a Selmer amp, so I couldn't tell you how close it was, but I think mean, you might want to check one of those. Maybe out. I if, will. You're, if you're near, uh, if the tour goes anywhere near Milton Keynes, he's pretty, uh, yeah, he's pretty near there. Anyway. Yeah, because I, I played an amp three years ago called the Selmer uh, Thunderbird Twin 30. Right. That apps i couldn't believe i'd never heard of this amp i mean yeah. i heard of selmer amps but yeah. that one and i lost my mind it was so good but they're expensive right and they're not that many of them you could find the regular zodiac twin 30 but not the thunderbird quite as often and it floored me and then since then i bought a uh, a treble and bass actually last time when i was here okay because they're easy, easier to find yeah here. yeah and uh i stayed at dudley's house for like six months and then my friend joe bonamassa brought it back for me in his trunk of all of his gear you know and that that's the best plexi man if you want a plexi really? amp and you can't buy a vintage plexi yeah. go buy a selmer i'm amazed that no one's bass. sort of re 
uh, you know, because, you know, back in the in the days when I guess, you know, Denmark Street in London was massive and mm -hmm. you had the sort of the, um, uh, what was it called? Was it, uh, what was the big store on Charing Cross Road that had all the Fender stuff? I want to, I want to say Soho Soundhouse, but I'm, I might be wrong with that name. Um, but that was, I'm pretty sure that was the company that owned all the Selma stuff, or mm -hmm. certainly they were the agent for it all. Okay. Uh, and you'd see loads of it in the UK and loads of bands using it, but it's obviously gone bust at some point or other and it never seems to have been revived. But yeah. It, and yet it's a massive name from, from that era. Oh, yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Anywho, so what else we got? We talked. We got the battery all, box. <laughs> yeah, and you're using all Dan's gig rig power supplies now, by the way, of things? All gig rig power except for the batteries for the drive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you reckon this took Dan the best part of two days to wire up? Two, two full days, him and I and uh, <laughs> his friend. We did it three days all together. Yeah. That's incredible. I mean, it, two it's, days, two days. It's yeah. insane now with, you know, I mean, I don't think it's hugely unusual now to sort of go, your pedal board's got to be by some distance the most expensive part of your rig, isn't it? I mean, it's just, but that, it, maybe I, so. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, I'll go ahead and preface it by saying I'm pretty fortunate that I have relationships with a lot of these companies. Yeah, yeah. So, and some of these I already had, you know, duplicates of stuff that I, you know, most of these I had, I sent, I sent, you know, I sent all this stuff to yeah. Dan. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I realize how much is going on. In this all, your, all your relationships, though, I think with all the brands you use, mm -hmm. they start the right way around, don't they? Absolutely. They start with you yeah. buying the gear, using Absolutely, the gear, loving without the gear, question. and then going, yeah. can we work together rather than... You know, somebody coming to you and saying, "Hey, Absolutely. would you like, like some money to endorse this product, please?" Love you know? Pedal started, you know, probably 14 years ago. Yeah. When I bought a COT. Yeah. When he barely, I mean, he was using these enclosures that were like cobbled together. Yeah. And he was selling pedals for fifty dollars, you know, and the yeah. gear page had just started. You yeah. know what I mean, and all that stuff. And I remember the old church attack because that that you could that was only battery. Oh yeah. Only worked on battery, wasn't yeah. it? And it was just you just. Dropped it in the front of your gig bag, and it was mm -hmm. it was yeah great pedals. He he periodically sort of re um, releases those, doesn't he? But they're, yeah, they're, otherwise he's, he's doing this whole. He has these weird sales that he does now. Yeah, that it's like if you're on his list, you get this link, and you have hours to buy right. a pedal for a hundred dollars. You know, yeah. and he'll sell a, a couple hundred of them, and yeah. then gone. You know. Yeah, no, they're cool. I I do like that love pedal stuff. It's all cool. Well, look, I think you know. I know everyone's got places to be today. You're a busy man today, but why don't we play us out with something, you know, maybe that's uh, a little excerpt, maybe from the, the album or th what people might be able to see with, you, you know, if they come see a gig and stomp on some pedals. And anyway, look, this is Josh Smith. He's an amazing, amazing guitar player. Thanks, dude. If you get to go to a show, Oh, man, it's so good. If you get to go to a show, you know, obviously Josh is touring the US as well as the UK and you know, periodically uh, Europe as well. Or just listen to some music or whatever. Maybe Thanks, buy, buddy. Maybe buy a pedal. I don't know. But support yeah. him somehow. Buy a record cool. and a myriad fuzz. <laughs> Thank you.
Brilliant. That's it. The end. <laughs> All right. Fantastic.